Hello and welcome to Pickleball Therapy, the podcast dedicated to your pickleball improvement. Hope you're having a great week. We have just wrapped our fall 2022 mini series. Hopefully you were able to join us for some or all of that. It's been a lot of fun explaining those concepts. Always love sharing that type of information with pickleball players who want to learn, who want to grow. And during the pod, during the, uh, I was going to say during the podcast, during the workshops, there was a lot of questions in the chat. So we would present something, there'd be a lot of questions coming back, and it was it's good to have that kind of exchange. But it reminded me of a concept that I thought was worth talking about in the podcast, which is the idea of keeping our eye on the ball. And that's what we're going to talk about in the main section of today's podcast. And then in the riff, we're going to talk about time frames. I have a, a way that I want to discuss it with you that might help you keep some perspective in terms of time as you try to improve as a pickleball player, as you work to improve as a pickleball player and just grow as a player and as a person. Now, one thing I wanted to note is that if you are interested in the pickleball system, the registration for the system opens today, the day that the the podcast drops. That's the 21st of October, and it runs through the 27th of October. The pickleball system is a class. So you come in into a class, you would come into the fall 22 class. If you miss a registration for this class, you'd have to wait until the next class opens for registration couple of notes I want to leave you with on this. One, there's no risk if you join. In other words, you can join. It doesn't work out for you. We have a no questions asked money back guarantee. And the second thing is if you're in a place in your life where you can't make the financial commitment to the system, but you answer these two questions. One, you're committed to yourself and your improvement. And two, what we teach you, you know, myself and or CJ teach you resonates with you. Then uh, if both the answer to the questions are yes, then you can join the system. You just have to send us an email and then we'll work with you to get you inside the system. So neither financial uh, situations uh, nor worrying about risk should be a, a hindrance for you to join the system. All right, with that said, let's go ahead and dive into the podcast. Pickleball, like life, has inflection points. Those times when the light bulbs just go on and you see everything better. It's the same with pickleball. Sometimes those light bulbs will go on and you're going to play better. If you're ready to turn on the lights of Pickleball, join us inside the Pickleball system. Class is open for registration. It's only a limited amount of time. I don't know when you're listening to the podcast, so I can't tell you exactly when, but it's pretty soon. I'm going to put a link below. Go to thepickleballsystem.com and join us for our next class. Let CJ and I show you how to turn on the lights. We'll see you in class. As I mentioned earlier, there was a lot of back and forth during our workshops. You know, the players were asking a lot of questions in the in the chat and in the Q and A. Uh, so there's conversations going on there, back and forth as we as we spoke about things. And listen, I think it's fantastic that players have questions. I think it's fantastic that that you're curious, right? I, I think that's one of the beauties of our game is that it it keeps you, um, you know, it keeps you alive if you will it, it just adds interest to your life and you can again remain curious about pickleball and what about this and what about that and growing and that's great but what what can happen is if you want to improve is we can take our eye off the ball and that's you know that happens literally when we're playing sometimes you know we lose sight of the ball but figuratively here is that we can lose sight of what it is that's important what it is that's going to give us the maximum return for our time, the maximum bang for our buck, if you want to look at it that way. Listen, all of us have limited time. I don't even if you have 30 hours a week to dedicate to pickleball, you only have 30 hours, right? So how to spend that time on, on and most of us have less, obviously, but but the the quite you know to our improvement. So how do you spend your time if you're going to improve as a pickleball player? What we suggest is that you spend your time on, again, the low-hanging fruit, the things that will give you a lot of return in exchange for the least amount of work. And I'll give you a couple of examples. So we were talking about pop-ups and we were talking about energy, energy into the shot. So the focus that we had was paddle swing. If you know anything about our teachings or you've watched some of our videos, swing is a huge part of energy transfer into the ball. And it's an area of the of the game that most players can it would be well served to work on, right? We be well served to, to try and 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 uh, compact their swing. And it's an area that is fixable, right? It's an area that you can work on. It does fix some work, but it is an area that is, it's, the amount of effort to fix it is not as great as some other areas, including the one I'm going to mention in a second. And the upside is huge, right? If you can control your swing, oh, the, the returns are just amazing, 
right, in terms of amount of energy, trajectory, all sorts of benefits of controlling your swing in, in the, on the pickleball court. We were getting questions while I was talking about this. We were getting questions in the chat about things like footwork and grip pressure and things like that. Not footwork in the in the general sense of footwork, which is, you know, everybody needs to move around the court. But the questions are very specific. Things like, you know, should I, you know, one player that you showed us had their right foot in front, the other had left foot, you know, things like that. And this is not a criticism. Again, I think it's great that that folks are curious, right, and have questions. And, and, and I, don't, I never am going to. I don't ever want to make somebody feel bad for asking the question. What I'm trying to point out, is, and, and let me back up a second. It's not a criticism, but in order to address something that we think needs to be addressed, we have to talk about it, right? So, again, I'm not meaning to criticize anybody for asking questions, but I need to talk about it if we're going to discuss, you know, the potential, um, the potential limitations of that approach as opposed to what I'm going to recommend. So... The questions about like which foot to put in front versus the other and things like that, would that have an impact on the shot? Sure, you know, but actually I would say sometimes yes, sometimes no, but it's not as big, right? So you're talking about an area that is less return, right? So, you know, putting your right foot out in front versus your left foot out in front to, to get your balance and control on your shot is going to have less return and it's a big lift. I mean, if you... Have you ever done the thing where you cross your arms? So, you know, do it now if you want. If you're not driving, cross your arms and then switch the arms. In other words, whichever one's on top, make it on the bottom. That's going to feel weird. Well, that's the same thing with your movement. You know, you have a natural tendency to step forward with one leg or the other leg in certain situations. And now you're going to try and rewire the brain to do it opposite, perhaps. Um, just not, not a good use of time. And so what can happen is is you'll end up spreading yourself too thin on the practice side of things, on the improvement side of things, and not really getting anywhere. CJ likes to say in our camps and when we train, she likes to say to the folks, you know, would you rather have, you know, a lot of shots, very little, you know, very little, uh, uh, you're, you're not very good in a lot of shots, or would you like to be very good at one or two shots? And you're better off completing the task with one shot as opposed to spreading yourself among various different concepts and things, uh, or, you know, one area. So like in this case, paddle swing, focus on paddle swing. Don't focus on paddle swing, left foot, right foot, foot grip pressure, and all these other pieces. Focus on the one thing and really get that down. That's how you're going to see improvement. The same thing applies when you're playing. So when you're playing, what you want to do is you want to focus on the area that you're still that you're working on in practice. What you don't want to do is you're working on a certain thing in practice and then you go play and all of a sudden you're working on something else. It's too confusing, right? Focus on the one area that you're working on and keep working on it. And I want to talk to you about one specific thing. I'm going to, you know, I want to give you one actionable thing that you can do. And what we're talking about here is one shot that I'm going to give you. If you're not sure what to work on, you're sitting out there and you're like, I'm not really sure what I should be working on right now. I got one shot for you. Return of serve, and not just return of serve. I want you to try and return deeper. So a good mark, a good target for your return of serve is four foot from the baseline on the center line. If you're hitting it there consistently, go to three foot. And if you're hitting it there, you can go to two feet. Don't go closer than two feet. That's as deep as you're going to go with your target. So work on getting your returns deep consistently. I'm not talking about, yeah, I hit them deep sometimes. No, every single return of serve deep. And here's what's going to happen, all right? Number one, you're going to get to the non-volley zone line with no problems. You're going to, you'll be able to walk up there half the time. Number two, which is related to one, but I want to focus on this or I want to, I want to highlight it. You will not get caught halfway up. Getting caught halfway up is just a recipe for disaster. So you'll get up to the MBZ line and you won't be stressed in the middle there where they're attacking you. Related to that one is you're going to avoid getting hammered. When you're playing bangers, Bangers love short returns of serve. They're going to come forward and they're going to start peppering you or hammering you with balls. The way you avoid that, return deep. You will also win a lot of rallies with just that one shot. You will see that your opponents are not going to know what to do. Right? For a lot of you out there right now at the where you're playing in the rec games and things like that, your opponents are not going to be able to handle the deep return of serve, and the rally is going to be over after one or two shots. That one and maybe a deep punch volley, you're out. Super easy. When you hit those short returns of serve or mid-range mid, mid -range returns of serve, that's what gets dicey, right? Whether they catch you 
or they start hammering you and things like that, one shot you can focus on right now, that'll give you a ton of return. Not saying it's not any work. There's a little bit of work involved. But get the little bit of work you have to do on your return of serve. When you're playing, really focus on getting a deep return of serve. And you'll see amazing results. All right, in the riff, we're going to talk about time frames. And it, it relates to improvement as well. So let's get ready and stay tuned for the riff. As a pickleball player, you are no doubt working on your game. But are you also working on your vision? Doesn't it make sense that better vision will lead to better pickleball? Not to mention better night driving. CJ and I rely on the experts at Visual Edge to help us track those balls so we don't ever miss a shot. If you're ready to take your vision and perhaps your game to the next level, join us inside Visual Edge. I'll link to it below. We'll see you inside. All right, let's talk a little bit about time frames. And, and I don't want to get too philosophical here, but I guess we're going to get a little philosophical. So here's, here's what happens. There's, um, you know, there's, humans have a hard time with time. Hard time with time, okay. They have a hard time with time. And what I mean by that is, if you want to make improvement in your, game, in your game, there's always tomorrow, right? And always tomorrow and always tomorrow. So you never really get to it. And there's a, 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 a boss that I used to work with, a, a manager of mine that used to manage me, used to say, work expands to the time allotted. And so the idea was if you had a week to get something done, you know, a memo or some writing thing done, you would take a week to do it. If they told you I need this in two hours, you would get it done in two hours. And so when we when we put time commitments on ourselves, right, some sort of a deadline or some sort of a, a time period around something, it will help us actually get what we want to get done done. An example of that is the pickleball system. And I'm going to use that as, as the framework for what we're talking about here. The pickleball system, when you sign up for the system, it's one year. So players ask, you know, well, don't I get it forever? Or, you know, do I get to keep it? No, it's a class. You have a year. When you sign up, you have a year with CJ and, and myself, you know, walking you through the first 90 days, and then you have the rest of the, the program there for you. But you're committing to yourself. What you're saying to yourself is, I, I'm going to work on this for the next year. And by by signing up for a program like that, what happens is, you don't end up with like a set of DVDs on a shelf that I'll get to it tomorrow. I get to it tomorrow. Why? Because there's a little bit of urgency, right? There's a little bit of fire lit under you to get something done. So as you think of your improvement, right, whether you join the system or not, try and incorporate some time frames in there, you know, to help you out. So make, make sure you set some deadlines for yourself. And if you join the system, you're going to have a deadline because it's 365 days. So keep that in mind as you as you work to improve. Uh, work expands to the time allotted. All right, I hope you enjoyed the podcast this week and that you have a great week. Uh, we'll be back next week with another uh, full podcast. As always, Actually, I'll be in, uh, in South Carolina Hilton Head for the tournament. So if you can check it out at the APP, I think it'll be televising some of it. Maybe we'll make it to the TV channel. So check that out. And uh, as always, if you enjoyed the podcast, please rate and review it uh, wherever you're listening to it and share with your friends. If you enjoyed it, they probably will too. Have a great week and we'll see you next time.